Okay, even though I've pretty much said and shown all there is to say about the flow hives and the flow supers, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about something I found. It's from a company called Recap Mason Jars, and they make lids for your glass mason jars that serve a variety of purposes, and they've put stuff out uh, for beekeepers. But what was really neat for me was when I was looking at these lids and that pop top comes open, it's three, quarter of a, three quarters of an inch. So I was thinking maybe I could make elbows for the flow frames and we could stick those inside these lids and then there would be no bees or wasps or yellow jackets getting into the honey while we're draining flow frames. And when you get flow frames, you get lots of these tubes so you can play around with them. You really only need, you know, one or two tubes during extraction. So I took one here and I cut each of them at 45 degrees and then I just glued them together with 100% silicone to make a 90 degree elbow. And then this is a food grade 90 degree elbow that I found on Amazon, Schedule 40. That thing is expensive. I paid $11 for that plastic elbow, but I think that's overkill because it's really designed for industrial food processing equipment. This is the underside of one of the recap mason jar lids and it shows they have replaceable gaskets for those. And these things right out of the package are basically ready for the flow hive. So today in this video, I'm gonna take this out to the apiary and we're gonna hook these up and see how they work. The advantage is, if you've watched my past videos, I've always had to catch and collect uh, primarily yellow jackets that come around when we're extracting honey from flow frames. And this company is actually targeting flow hive. So it's interesting. Plus there's this lid that goes in a normal quart size jar that pops open. So if you had candied honey, you could get a spoon in there. But I'm not really interested in that one. I like the one that's got the pour spout. So, um, and this is showing the wide mouth lids on the right is the traditional ball jar metal lids. Now they have a plastic lining on the inside, but over time they do rust a little bit and they're designed for canning. I'm not interested in canning, I'm just collecting honey. And oftentimes the wind will be blowing or um, as I said, bugs try to get into the honey while you're extracting. And I think that this method is going to contain it while we're extracting from the flow frames. So now we're out in the apiary. We have a beautiful sunny day. You can see that the sun is high. We're doing this around noonish. And that's because during this time of day, the bees are out working and very few of them are in the hive. Uh, don't forget to tilt your hive back. This hive just has a flow super on it. If it were a regular flow hive, they're already tilted back, so you don't have to do that. And here they are. So I have two half gallon jars. And I'm just giving you a close-up look at these flow frames and their capped uh, honey. And this will be the third extraction from this particular flow super. So these have been in use for over a year. We have high wind conditions today. I notice that sometimes people set out their jars to collect from their flow frames and the honey, uh, while it's dripping down to the jar, just blows out to the side. So these are going to eliminate that. I'm also showing you a close-up of how I set up my shelf. I made what I'm calling a sag shelf. Uh, I use these uh, table saw supports with rollers on them to support the shelf, but that's actually too tall. So by making a modified shelf, it'll sit low enough that uh, I can put these half gallon jars on. And now you've probably seen me do this several times before, but I'm doing it again. We're just pulling out the little plugs at the bottom of the flow frames. And we're going to stick in my homemade elbow here on the right which is just the flow tubes that come with the flow frames and I cut them and glued them with 100% uh, silicone. So we're going to compare that with here on the left that uh, expensive food grade industrial plastic elbow and we're going to see if there's any difference. You know obviously the one on the left is really strong. The one on the right is just uh, kind of a butt joint where you just push the two pieces together but I see no reason why they wouldn't hold up. So, and now we're just pulling off the upper access and we're using that uh, screwdriver tip on the flow handles here. 
and you're going to hear them kind of crack a little bit as we open these up because they're sealed pretty well with propolis from the bees. And remember, we always start off, I'm only sticking them in about half the distance from the front to the back. We're not opening the entire length of these uh, flow frames at one time because as we've seen in the past, sometimes that overwhelms the drain tube and then uh, there'll be more leaking into the hive. So we've learned to avoid that by doing partials and again also not opening a whole bunch of frames at once. So we have two half gallon glass jars here made by Ball and then of course we have the two uh, wide mouth recap mason jar lids with the pop tops and the other thing is too we're going to leave these lids on because now they're just pour tops but I want you to see look at uh, how snug that fits no bug is going to get in there so um, it also leaves enough so there's kind of an air gap too we don't want to create air pressure inside and slow down the, the filling process and this kind of shows you a look at my sag bench here my sag shelf that uh, allows you to put your support lower than the actual uh, rollers that are supporting the shelf and the one on the right is filling a little faster than the one on the left and that's because I don't think I opened up enough of the frames at first and I used um, half gallon jars because we know from past experience that there's never been more than half a gallon of uh, honey in a frame on the flow hive. So that's pretty safe. You don't have to stand there and worry about swapping out quart jars, for example. Now some people do take their jars and they put cellophane over it and I'm also seeing on YouTube yes I look at the other flow high videos out there and I see that people like to hook up like four or five tubes at once and run them right into that five gallon bucket or what people call a honey bucket that's got the honey cane at the bottom and I'm gonna caution you not to do that because frame by frame especially this time of year we're in August and it's August 23rd um, this time of year the frames have unique flavors of honey in them if you combine them all into one big container again you're mixing the the flavors and you're not benefiting from that individuality frame by frame and again this is just a close-up look at the diametrical clearance here between that three quarter inch tube and the opening on these recap lids it's like they were made for it. it's really perfect and we're almost up to the 1500 milliliter level here so we are getting full loads out of these frames and I did do water testing on these after we were done and it ranged anywhere from 15% water to 17% water so it was all really good now an advantage too to setting them on the bench and putting tubes in like this is you can leave them there and go do other things you don't have to stand guard as I used to and catch the uh, the yellow jackets as they came around I used to pull them out with chopsticks that's done. The wind can blow as strong as it wants to and these things are completely covered and completely protected. So you could go look at wildflowers for example. You can go wander around. You can do other bee chores in your bee yard. You don't have to sit there and keep watch over your flow frames while they're draining. Just go away and come back later. You definitely don't want to close them off too early anyway because if you close off uh, your flow jars too soon while you're collecting honey the trough at the bottom actually will fill up with honey so you definitely want to leave them long enough for them to completely drain and when it goes to just a little bit of dripping that's when you know you can close them up and uh, cap off your jars and go back to uh, taking care of your bees or doing whatever else you want to do we make sure to grow lots of uh, pollen producing plants on my property even though bees go several miles to forage it's always helpful to have as much pollen local to your bees as possible. Nectar is another thing, but the pollen is really what's going to keep your hive strong. So in summary, you know, don't waste your money as I did on this 90 degree Schedule 40 elbow. Make your own. Cut 45s on those tubes that are already provided by Flow. And just get 100% silicon sealer and butt joint those two together and you've got a 90 degree elbow. Get those recap 
uh, mason jar lids too and you're all set. Thanks for watching. I hope this helped you get thinking about how you might better control the honey coming out of your flow hive.